and I feel I'm working as hard as I am because I feel I'm doing something in the world, and uh, uh, I can't say no to the opportunities that are given me to have an effect uh, in people's thinking and people's looking at the world and the way we live and the way we relate to one another. I think it's a critical time in the history of life on the planet Earth, and uh, I have an opportunity to, to give voice, to articulate to what I think a lot of people are thinking. And if there's the opportunity to do that, and through that, having people say, yeah, you know, that's actually how I feel, then perhaps uh, there's the opportunity for real change in our lives, and change, I think, for the better. It's about time we realize it. We're all in this together. It's about time we find out. It's all of us or none. I actually don't think we're close to a war. You know, I don't feel that kind of, of, uh, of tension. But I think that the arms race and, and the conflict uh, that we hold in ourselves, especially between the U.S. and the Soviets, Western and Eastern thinking to a degree, uh, I think it's, uh, it's dangerous. And it's impossible to imagine building all of those weapons and having, if not an accident, having them used one of these days intentionally. And as long as they're there, there's that possibility. And we've learned over the past couple of years uh, the, the potential effects of even a, what they call a limited nuclear war. And when people talk about uh, the, uh, a limited nuclear war, uh, the, uh, they have a word for it. And, and it's not deaths anymore. It's the mortality figures or something like yeah. that. And it's not human beings, mothers and fathers and children dying, you know? So uh, they, you can start to be callous about that. It's the same kind of thing that happens if you live all of your life in the city and never get out and touch the water or the countryside and get a feeling for that, you become callous about that. It no longer means something in your life. So if you start to talk about human beings that way, there starts to be that callousness in your heart, in your spirit. That, to me, is very, very dangerous. We no longer think of people as people. We think of societies, we think of, of isms, communism, socialism, whatever, but we don't think about people, and I think that that's dangerous. And it's about time we begin it, to turn the world around. It's about time we start to make it, the dream we've always known. It's about time we start to live it. has always been thought of as a universal language. It's my experience that that's true. It's also my experience that people all over the world are really the same. You know, you, you hear it said all the time that children are the same, little babies are the same. Of course they are. The birth cry of every newborn baby is the same. But you don't hear people talk about the fact that parents are the same. And I tell you that they are. And grandparents are the same. And lovers are the same. And if you talk in that kind of category, that includes all of us, all over the planet. That includes people who live in mud huts in Africa. That includes people who live in communes in China. That includes people who live in apartment houses in the Soviet Union and in small little farmhouses here in Ireland. We are all the same. And it's time for us to begin recognizing that we are a family as humankind and to live out of that knowledge and that perspective. Global thinking, you see. And that doesn't diminish that you can be Irish, and I can be American, and someone can speak French, or someone can have the, the incredible range of Chinese culture that, that history shows us. But we're all human beings, and we have to start living out of that. That's my feeling. So what I do with my music is I travel all over the world, and you know what's funny? My songs are so much about America. Take Me Home Country Roads, West Virginia, Rocky Mountain High in Colorado, the wheat fields of Kansas and Matthew. Uh, and yet people all over the world relate to these songs. And the guy who writes these songs writes a song like Annie's song, which people use in their weddings all over the world. You know, and out of all of that comes a situation where I've, I've been on television. I'm recognized everywhere. I, I have yet to walk down the street of any town, any city. And in fact, last December, I was in the largest slum in the world, in Bombay, India. And people started following me around. John Denver, John Denver, same country roads. 
So that's pretty remarkable. But it, it also signifies how small the world is today. And if you have that kind of a situation, that kind of celebrity, then perhaps there's, there's some value in that, and you ought to use it responsibly. And so that's what I'm doing with my music. And the thing, you know, the thing that I tell people in, in my concerts is that parents speak to their children from the heart. And it's the heart that hears. You know, when you're trying to raise your child, uh, lovers speak from their hearts, and they hear with their hearts. And the heart only knows the truth. So if we speak to one another and address one another and relate to one another heart to heart, we want peace in our lives. We want, we want the opportunity to be able to work for a living, to make our own way in the world, to find a partner and to raise a family. That lives in the heart of every man and every woman on the planet, you see? Now what we have to recognize is whether that's being allowed, if that opportunity is still there for us in the world in which we live. And I say to you that there are a lot of places in the world where that is no longer possible. I think it's, it's two things. I think, first of all, it's a sense of global thinking, of recognizing the human family as a whole, recognizing that it's no longer a world of you or me, which is the way it's always been. You or me, which means me first. You see? It's always been that way. But that doesn't work anymore. So this is a shift in consciousness. And this is a, a Copernican shift. It's a, it's a shift in the whole way that we look at ourselves and at the world. It's now you and me. And it hurts me when he's hungry and when his children cry. I too am a father and that little one is mine. It's about time we begin it to turn. I don't think that you can get out of it. I don't think we're going to end hunger until, until every one of us has as ending hunger the way that I live my life. That's part of why I'm working as hard as I do, is this, this is a commitment, you see. And it's not to an event, and it's not just to raising people's consciousness, it's to the end of hunger. I know from having served on this commission and the work that we did, the study that we did, the information that we received, we produce enough to feed twice the population of the planet right now. There's not too many people. I also know that where we have increased productivity, that infant mortality has gone down and the population growth rate has gone down. This is proven. So we're not going to have too many people if we provide enough. It's about peace. It's about plenty. It's about time. It's about you and me together. And it's about time.